Hello, and in this video we're going to talk about images and borders. So pretty much images. Now they're really really simple and it's basically just adding an image to your page. So let's say I wanted to add an image just below our big heading perhaps, so just here. Now what we do is we use the IMG tag and then we have to specify obviously a source for where the image is located. So we do SRC and so we use the SRC attribute just to set where it is and then we do a slash because it's an empty tag and then we close the tag or the element. So let's go ahead and set a source to something. Now this can be a relative directory so for example it might be in the same folder as your HTML file or it could be in a folder deeper so like images slash or I think it's probably going to want to be slash images slash uh, logo dot png for example, obviously in this instance I don't actually have an images folder set up so I'm actually just going to use a URL so for example we can go to devhq.net oops slash images slash logo.png so this should now, now actually be functional if we just go back to our page we refresh we can see here is the devhq logo in all of its beauty <laughs> all it's done is it's gone okay we want an image and it's located at http slash images slash logo.png so it goes oh look there's logo.png let's just go ahead and display it on this page and it doesn't like change the width or the height or anything like that we can do that with the width and height properties but I'm not going to go over them in this video because they are already in a future tutorial which is planned for you guys so I guess that's pretty much all I'm really going to actually be teaching you on images at the moment uh, it's worth noting that images are actually affected by the text align so if I uh, in fact I'll put it back where it was nothing wrong with it being there and then if we go to body and say text align center for a second we can see brilliant now the image is also text align center it hasn't been like shifted over or anything weird like that just change it back to the left for now though because I know that's annoying to edit for me so we go looking like that for so far I guess let's maybe move the image to the top because I've got to admit, it's looking a bit out of place in this document. There isn't really a right place for a random logo in this uh, web page. I guess it'll be fine there for the time being. Um, and you know what? Let's go ahead and add a border to this, because that's also what this lesson is about. So borders are actually really simple. If we just use our IMG selector, or of course we can use body space IMG, which means get all the image tags inside the body. But I mean, there's really no point in doing that. Um, and pretty much what we're going to do is we're just going to use our border property. Now, the first thing we give this is the size of the border. So, for example, one pixel you're going to want in most cases, one pixel thick. And then the color of our border, so we can do this in hex. Whoops. Oh, sorry, new Mac keyboard. There we go. And we might want to set it to something noticeable like FCO. And then we do the type of border. So the most common is going to be solid. So if we just save that. We can see, ah, now this image actually has this really thin gold border, just to make sure that it actually gets picked up on the recording. I'm just going to set this to something like 5 pixels. Yeah, hopefully you should be able to see that now. In fact, you know, there's nothing wrong with making it super clear. Let's make it 10 pixels. So there we go. We now have this border of gold, which is 10 pixels thick. So we have 10 pixels, and then we set our color. This can be hex form. This can be just, like, word form. This can be... RGB or RGBA, it's very, very simple. And then the type, now we have various types we can do. So solid is the one we've got at the moment, just like that. And then we also have dotted. So you can just see it basically just dots it like that. And we also have dashed, which is simple dashes. And of course solid, we also have double, which is kind of like a double line, like that, which looks pretty cool. And we also have Groove, which kind of looks, it looks pretty cool, I like Groove, if used in the right places, that can be a really tacky effect if obviously you're using the wrong places. Uh, we have Ridge, which looks like that. Again, we have these color effects, which makes it look like it's jolting in different directions, when it actually isn't. Uh, we also have Inset, which kind of makes it look like it's in. And we also have the opposite of inset, which is outset, which kind of makes it look like it's going out. Just like that. So they're pretty simple effects. I've got to say, obviously, I'm going to use solid most of the time because solid is extremely useful. But I don't know, perhaps dotted is a 
occasionally useful, and dashed is occasionally useful. Uh, thin dashed borders can look quite nice sometimes if I just put that down to maybe three pixels. Yeah, that looks okay. That doesn't look too bad. But obviously, not only can we actually not obviously at all. I don't know why I said obviously. But not only can we actually just use the border property, we can also do border left, border right, border top, and border bottom. And we just give these the same value. So most of the time with a border, you're probably going to want to go all around the element. But occasionally, like, let's just keep this as it is for now. Let's just say, um, let's make it something nice like groove, perhaps. Yeah, let's keep that as groove. And just below the image, let's have some links in an unordered list. In fact, let's not put them in an list because that's going to make me use some properties I don't want to use. So let's. Oh, I'm tempted to put them in an unordered list. Should I? Yeah, I will. I'm just not going to make them look like a navigation bar as I originally planned. So we're just going to have a few links. Let's just have a list element, and we'll have a link just a hash, which isn't going to take them anywhere. And you can just say like home, and we slash the list element, and let's just duplicate this a few times. Maybe that's one too many. Home about um, forum contact or forum portfolio might be a bit better. So let's just look at that, how it looks. And okay, we have some simple links here. And I mean, they don't go to anywhere, they just go to hash, which is going to add a hash to the URL. So that's absolutely fine. We're not telling them to do anything. But what we can actually do is if we then go ahead and function. Function. What am I even talking about? Let's get all of our ul lia. I guess there was no real reason to to do that. Maybe just lia would have been fine, but who really cares? And let's just say border. Let, let me just actually add some spacing. It's going to be difficult for me to get it off the bottom of the video. And, and we can set the border left to one pixel um, black solid. And I guess let's go ahead and also set the border right to one pixel black solid. And it's not quite what I wanted because they're right next to the link. So what are we going to do about that? Well, first of all, let's actually just say ul text align. Oh, is this going to do what I want it to do? Please. No, it's not. All right, ul li. No, it's not going to do what I want it to do. Okay, that's fine. So I guess we'd have to suffice as it was like that. But what we can do, and what I've been meaning to do, is we could add some margins to it. So we could say we want zero pixels for the top and the bottom, we're not bothered about that. Or perhaps a lower amount, such as maybe five pixels. And for the left and right, let's say we want maybe ten pixels. And what this should do is this should then push out the borders. But of course it hasn't, because by margin I of course meant padding. And there we go. Now it's not quite the effect I was going for. Um, really, but I mean, I guess it. Where is my mouse gone? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm actually my magic mouse is running out of battery, so I'll try and actually speed this video up uh, before it becomes a complete disaster. But pretty much, we then have some borders around this list here, and this one here is kind of uh, an effect off that. In fact, let's just go to the bottom one here. Let's just remove the link from that. That doesn't really need to be linked anymore. Perhaps we'll just keep the border to the left and remove the one from the right. So that's okay, we have a cool little thing here which kind of, I don't know, that gives a nice effect. So all we're using there is border left, and that's just saying the border on the left side. So apart from that, let's also quickly do a little bit on negative margins. So if we just go body, what we can actually do is let's just set a margin left on the whole body of our document to, let's just say, 100 pixels. I'm really worried my mouse is going to run out. Let's give it a bit of a shake. <laughs> of 100 pixels. I'm worried about my mouse. Okay, it's here. Quick. <laughs> so if we set everything to 100 pixels margin on the left, so that the whole body has this 100 pixel margin, what we can then do, let's say, okay, actually what we want, let me really just get my alternate mouse, which I luckily have wired up. Uno secondo. I'm just going to move the microphone a little bit. Okay, this should do the job for now. 
slightly less elegant mouse than my magic mouse would be able to do for now. So let's just say we actually want to move the logo just back here to where it was before. We want all of the body to be indented 100 pixels, but the logo we want to be back. So let's just go ahead and go to our IMG and let's just give it very simply, in fact let's do it above the border, let's just go margin, left and, oh man I can't type anymore uh, margin left, and let's just set it to minus 100 pixels simple enough right, so our whole body is going across 100 pixels and then our image is going back 100 pixels, so our image should be in its original position and if we refresh the page, our image is back where it was and all of our other content is still indented the 100 pixels originally so that's a little bit of negative margins there as well, and some people are going to consider negative margins margins a bit of kind of a hackish way to do things, but I think, I mean, in a situation like this where I'm indenting everything by 100 pixels, it makes sense just to go, actually, the logo is the one exception to this, perhaps we should just have minus 100 pixels, or perhaps um, a better solution might be to surround all this bottom part in a division and then give that some margins, but we haven't done divisions yet, so don't worry about that too much. For now, this actually makes a really good solution for the problem. So... That is the end of the end. Duh, duh. That's the end of the end, is it? Wow. Uh, that's the. Whoa, now my voice is going crazy. That is the end of this tutorial on the images, borders, and a little bit on negative margins. And have a nice day.